Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Top Tier Talk Season 3. We're going to kick it off with a Friday evening game, Luton Town 1, West Ham 2. I am lapping it up. Uh, I'll save my comments till later. Either one of you two got anything to say? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I guess the only thing to talk about, I mean, West Ham were expected to win, but by the end of it, I think they were lucky to... And Luton weren't awarded that pen, because it looked a stonewall pen to me. It's handball. I don't know why they didn't look at VAR. What? Well, was it natural position? I don't understand the rules. Well, they did look at it. They just didn't call the referee over. It looked a handball to me, to be honest. So, don't know. Don't happen there. But Paqueta assist. Um, he's firing. Um, Zuma goal. I mean, we all expect West Ham to win. But Luton, I don't think... They don't even look like they're going to win a game. Oh. You guys think, I mean, Dan's obviously loving it. But... Well, Garth Crooks today said he, uh, he thinks they'll be down by, um, by December, by Christmas. That's a long time away. They could be down sooner. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, um, I do agree with what you said about it. It was a penalty, as, as funny as it is, obviously, for us. As, I know, yes, they're in a league above us, but it's still a rival. Same as if it would have been the other way around or if it was any other clubs. It was a penalty, but it's against a rival, so it's funny. It wasn't I don't understand it. I mean, we looked but, at the replays yeah. twice in the then, so. I, I think the thing that might have swayed it is it fell to a West Ham player behind him. Am I right in thinking that? I think as in if it would have, yeah, well, no, uh, well, yeah, no, I know, but as in if it might have looked at it and got it didn't directly affect a loot. Do you know what I mean? That, I, I don't know. I'm speaking from just a, a stab in the dark, so obviously I, I don't know. But that might have been the thought process going. It didn't directly affect. Obviously, if a loot player would have been behind him, gone to control it and missed the ball because of the handball, then yes, it would. Do you know what I mean? But other than that, we don't know what the decision. What you're saying, but to me, um, <clears throat> handball's handball. Oh yeah. I mean, it would have been a disadvantage to Luton because it went to the West Ham player after that did the flick. Yeah. Just to touch on as well, uh, Kurt Zuma getting man of the match. Uh, I know, obviously, he has his, uh, haters for the incident uh, that come to light earlier this year. Well, last... Well, no, it was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? When you guys were in the Prem, I remember yeah, the game. Yeah, a couple of years ago. About, yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> he, he deserved a man of the match um, on Friday night. He got his goal and very nearly kept a clean sheet if it wasn't for, for a late, late goal. So, yeah, yeah. He, he was deserved. Probably one of his better games that I've seen, at least, in a West Ham shirt. No, West Ham looked good. Um, I mean, we, we're going to see, still waiting to see Kudos as well. So, yeah, I think that there's a top half finish, definitely, for them. I think at the moment they're, they're on highs of highs because they're like top four, isn't it? But no, they were top of the league for about 12 hours. Yeah, they were singing <laughs> about it, didn't they? So, yeah. Routine win. Yeah, anything else to touch on, Jabez? So, Saturday half 12, I didn't watch it as I was on the on the way up to Coventry to watch us throw away numerous leads. Uh, Sheffield 2, Everton 2, so we'll skip over that one. Uh, another 2 all Brentford, Bournemouth. Um, that's, they're, they're fairly evenly matched teams, I suppose. Uh, and Bournemouth getting another goal. But I suppose it's not, I didn't, again, I've, I've seen highlights, but I didn't watch the game. Um, on to an actual talking point in the next game, Man City 5, Fulham 1. Um, the game essentially being killed off and Fulham being killed off, I suppose, at 2-1 down with the Ake goal on the stroke of half-time, controversially being given after, well, what Haaland has admitted was an offside, or he thinks is an offside. But I'm sure half the footballing world has also agreed with him saying it's an offside. Well, they, they're given every week, or at least every other week. So, thoughts? It, it was offside, definitely. Um, but aside from that, I don't think it really affected the game. Burnley looked... Um, Sorry for Burnley. Fulham. Fulham looked all right for a bit. They have against some big teams, but this time it's just... I think the problem... You, I watched that game, and it's so frustrating to play against a team like Man City because now that they have Haaland, he had four passes in that game. He was not in the game. And then the only time he was in the game was when he'd get that one touch and he would score with it. He's unbelievably clinical. It's beyond belief at this point. He just finishes everything. I, I, I'm starting to forget him missing chances now. It's got It's gotten to this stage. And I think the reason why in finals you see him not scoring as much is because teams completely aim to shy him out. So he doesn't even get the opportunity. If you give this guy an opportunity, he scores. So it must just be so demoralising playing against some a team that clinical now. It was good to see Doku getting a chance. Um, and yeah, aside from that, there's not much. Like, it's really hard now for us to compete against this because it's Man City. They picked up from where they left off. They've replaced really well in this window. The players they've let go of quite a few important players, and I thought they've done well with what, who they've let go and who they've brought in. So it's going to be the same old, to be honest. I mean, they, if we just talk about a couple of their transfers, as you said, Doku's come in. Uh, Nunes, 
who was Wolves is a <clears throat> Wasn't he Wolves' top signing, like biggest? Yeah. Four, um, I, think that, I think it was what they paid, City paid, is what Wolves paid. Was it? It was around the £44 million yeah. mark. So, yeah, and Guardiola, and like, I'm sure there's one more we're missing, but <clears throat> do, do you know what I mean? I think they probably look stronger, don't they, to what they did last year, despite them winning the treble. So it's like scary at this point. This is the argument that's always been there. Obviously, they've always had a very good squad. Like, the squad depth has been ridiculous, but. Yes, they've expanded the squad depth to probably another level in terms yeah. of, and and the players that have obviously still been there. Like you look at Ortega towards the end of last season, obviously in the UCL and in the league games he was getting, but no one were really giving him a sort of sniff in the team because obviously Edison was, uh, was because Edison's been Edison. But when he's played, he's looked like he stepped up to the plate. And if Edison gets injured or suspended, which is probably more likely, knowing him playing centre mid half the time, he looks capable enough to play and goal. So, yeah, no, he's yeah. good with it. Even Walker signing a new deal. We all thought he was off to Bayern Munich, so hmm. just I, mean, I, for us. I, I just find it interesting how no one ever like because Man City is so happy and dandy though, no one actually focuses on some of the decisions because it it works out. When you win a game, no one really cares about what who starts and who doesn't. But Guardiola, for example, is the most expensive defender in Premier League history. And yeah. we've got an international break coming up. So Guardiola does not need to be rested as the most expensive defender in Premier League history, yet he didn't play a part. He was benched and they still won 5-1, didn't look troubled. Um, I think, obviously, you can't complain about that when they've won. And knowing something like that happening at Man United, we'd lose a game and it would all be the attention. But I wonder if City did lose, if people would ask that question. Because it's interesting, when a player like that could sign to that level, surely he plays a bit more. But funnily enough, the guy who came in for him scored, so... It's just a joke, beyond a joke there, squad. I, th- I think it has been mentioned or touched on a few times before, like the whole pep rotation meme, obviously with FPL players and stuff like that. Like you can never be too sure who's starting. But as I've just said, and obviously as we said most weeks, with City squad depth, it's obviously I know there are replacements in the summer, but if any of their midfielders get injured, obviously they brought in Kovacic and Nunes. Wingers get injured, obviously they're still Bernardo and stuff like, that, like stuff like that. Grealish can still go in. Foden, Alvarez is now playing. In the in the hole, but if worst comes to worst, he was a nine, didn't we? Yeah, he was a striker. He was playing in the hole, like he's played in the and hole, he's he's well. and, and he's played across the front three as well. I think so just it's just Pep, man. It's all Pep. Like even the fact that Ake has. Do you remember when they signed Ake for forty mil? We were like clowning it because I was like mm. forty plus for Ake. Was it relegated Bournemouth? It was that, wasn't he? Yeah, because he had a clause in his thing. Like... And he's like he's starting ahead of Guardiola, the most expensive like centre back. Back slash left back where he plays and whatever he is down to Pep's coaching in it like Stones in yeah. DM it's all like Pep like he's made players in one position become but very, I also very... I mean Cancelo was used to be a right back he didn't touch left back and suddenly he became the best left back in the world at exactly. one point yeah. so now he's not there obviously but... I, I also think if I, I'm not obviously I've, I've I say I've always rated John Stones but I've always sort of he's always been there or thereabouts if if you've watched episodes before you know I love English players but um. But I think it also helps with the fact that they're at Man City. For example, if you put John Stones in Man United and tried to play him in the Casemiro role, not a shot, because because of the team he's in, because he's surrounded by a lot of other superstars, it also helps. Or do you I, think I, superstars, or do you think is Pep's just? Oh no, I, I love Pep as a manager and his coaching and yeah. stuff like that. And I've got other friends that I talk to and they go, "Oh, Pep's terrible. He's a checkbook manager." Da, da, da. But it's yes, it but he's also his. Tactical ability allows him to be, a, I say, a checkbook manager lightly because, as you said, I love him. But by the players that he wants is probably a better phrase. But um, or yeah, for as you said with Casemiro and Ake, like if you took Luke Shaw out of Man United and put in Dallow, like now obviously now Luke Shaw's injured, there's there's a noticeable difference. Obviously things like that. I'm not saying obviously or like Gusto and James. Obviously there's there's differences in in obviously squad depth and and positions. Obviously not knocking the players, but in terms of. City, I think it helps that they've got quality to replace with not far off the quality of players that they're losing through injury, suspension, or even rotation. True. Yeah, a lot of it is down to Pep. We, I don't know who I was talking to with this about, but uh, every, think of any player that's gone to Man City. It's very rare to find one that went there at one level and then regressed. Pep's always improved them. They always come out a different player. There have been, maybe there's a couple who, he, but I don't see them paying a lot of money for players and then... The only one to mind that Failed probably was Latan, and that was at Barca. That was like, yeah, it's, I'm talking about Man City. I, I don't mean, know, one maybe Calvin Phillips, but even then, he has he's only been here a year. We don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. yeah. Also, when he has played, he's fitted in. He's fitted into the system. He hasn't looked. He's a good footballer. He's just unlucky. He's against the best DM in the Premier League. 
arguably the world. <laughs> but yeah, but, the world, yeah. But, that, but that's the thing. It's, it's you don't look at Calvin Phillips. He doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, even when he's coming and coming in against other top six sides. Whether that's yeah. because of Calvin Phillips' caliber of player, whether it's because of obviously, as I said, the other players around him help him out. But it's, I think it's a mixture of both. It's got to be a mixture of both, surely. But should we yeah. move on to the uh, next game? Yeah, Burnley. Burnley two, Spurs five, Son getting a hat-trick, one of three hat-tricks this weekend. Obviously, we just touched on the Haaland one. Uh, so, yeah, Son getting a hat-trick. Anything else to say? Well, obviously, Burnley went 1-0 up. I just want to say I'm, I'm in love with Madison right now. <clears throat> I liked him at Leicester, but I didn't really appreciate how good he is until Spurs. Like, maybe it's because I'm not, like, so like, like into, like, the bottom half teams. And maybe, maybe that's bad on my part as a football fan, but... He he's insane. Like he started off so well, and I hope he doesn't get injured. I know it's Tottenham. I don't like Tottenham, but as a player, Madison, like if he, if he doesn't get injured, he can have a proper proper good season. I mean, you'll 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 back me on this one. I've loved Madison for years. Have, whether, yeah. whether that is because I've watched a lot of lower end Premier League teams because my club was one for a, for a few years. Um, but no, I've said it for you. James Madison is, is silky, even in a team oh. like Leicester, who yes, they won the league, but that. That was a footballing miracle. But even when the season they nearly got relegated a couple of years ago, and obviously now they've gone down and he's left, he's still there getting 10, 12, maybe even 15 goal contributions in a relegated side, which isn't something that's done very often because they don't tend to score a lot yeah. of goals. But it's not even just goals, goals and assists. It's, it's um, the eye test as well. Like yeah. you look, He sees stuff that other players don't see. And yeah. I, I know obviously we'll probably... I'm hoping we'll get to see it for England at some point. Um, he should be starting. In this but, international break, he should be the starting ten. But that's what I was going to say. <laughs> him, and, him and Harry Kane. Harry, yeah. Kane. Harry Kane at Spurs with Madison behind him and Son and Kulusevski on the side. That would have been very dangerous. Yeah, I'm glad it didn't happen. No, I'm glad yeah. it didn't happen, yeah. Um, this is the I was going to say about Madison. Podcast. One thing, I feel like us top six fans, we get so engrossed in the players that play for our clubs. And I, I will put my hands up and say, I have always said Madison is better than Mount, but even for the fact that I even entertained that that could be an argument, I put my hands up. Like, that is, he is levels. Madison is levels at a Mount in every aspect. Output, statistics, the eye test, as you said. On the things ball. on the pitch, like, he, everything. There is nothing that Mount can do better than Madison. Maybe Mount off the ball. Runs a bit better, but running and we can all run. I can run. Madison, what he brings to that pitch is just outstanding. And by the way, Kingman Son still plays for Tottenham. Scored a hat trick, but I'll tell you right now, every Tottenham fan looks at Madison and they know that that is their main man now. He's their main man. Yeah. I also, just before we move on to the next game, so just how was it? Forty-three million they paid for? Was it around the forty million mark? I want to say less than that. And, well. and, and, and he's only twenty-six. <laughs> And he's still got yeah, is three or four good years. The in only it. thing is, is the injury issue. He does get injured, doesn't he? He does have a slight um, injury yeah. record, but he's better than Mountain. As Chavez said, I think I'm another one. I don't look at outside the top six or appreciate it as much. So, yeah, big up to Madison. And just uh, big up to Ange, to be honest. I don't like giving Tottenham praise, but it's just Ange, you know. And I, I just like this. I mean, midweek we... they lost to Fulham, didn't they, in the penalty shootout in the EFL Cup? But that happens like... to the best of us, really. Yeah, but they ain't gonna win the. If I think if we're praising praising, Ad, I love his interview. Was he like, uh, was he like, did someone ask him about like the Copy inverted man. fullbacks? Pep. Pepe, he was like, yeah, he was like, so, so, it, Copy just, and Pep. yeah, so it's copying Pep, mate. But it's you see, yeah. I know everyone clowned because he was at Celtic before, wasn't he? And he came, and everyone was like, "Oh, getting a Celtic think, manager in Scottish Prem." Managed da, da, da. him as well when he was a player in Australia. I know that don't mean anything. It's just a little fun fact for you guys. But... <laughs> fun fact. A mere fun fact of the week. There we go. You learn from Puskas. Moving on from a mere fun fact to a mere team losing one nil. So you said you don't tend to have a lot of knowledge of teams outside the top six. What about yeah. your own team? I have a lot of knowledge. Um, Chelsea nil. Not going for us one. I was at the game. Quite excited. Um. And then, I guess, Caicedo missed control, passed whatever to Gallagher. They took the ball. And um, Elanga, who is a United's, would have been United's best, best, best winger, no? Am I saying, am I throwing a bit too much shade there? Or would have been your first choice right winger, if you were still at the club, um, scored. And yeah, we couldn't break down a low block. That's the story of Chelsea. We pass it around the back, slow on the build-up. Um, 
no creativity and then just throwing balls in the box with no striker there, to be honest, because um, that's what Chelsea does. And that's been the story of Chelsea for the past few years against low blocks. But yeah, the only concern I have, which I will criticise Poch for, is this chill well at left wing. Because everyone thinks we're playing a three at the back, but it's actually a four with Levi Colwell left back and Chill on left wing. And Chill on left wing is not effective enough in the attacking. And it's like we're always playing from the right side. It's always from Sterling. The attacks are coming. So that's a bit of an issue. And Jackson is a he's a striker that likes to be involved in build up. So he needs help from the wingers to come inside from the attacking. But because Chilwell is so used to being a left back slash left winger, he's so wide. He's always only got Sterling as an option, so that's hurting us. So I don't want to see Chilwell playing anymore, unless it's a left back. Even then, I don't know why he plays Chilwell. I don't think he rates Chilwell as a left back, to be honest, guys. I don't I think saw, so. I saw um I, I don't know how true it was obviously I said you were at the game, so you might be able I, I think it was like a Chelsea fan TV clip and he was moaning mm-hmm. and he said basically Potch has frauded you all and he had cut a play back four with Colwell at left back and um, No, that's what he's been playing. He has Yeah, that's what he just said, yeah. Yeah, no, but as bad as in... three at the back. I thought. Do you remember the Liverpool game when you guys asked me the three at the back? I was confused. But it's actually oh, no, yeah. four. No, but, but as in, and then he said you obviously I didn't see it, but like with the, the, the attack, as he was saying, we're in the like the wrong order and stuff. Like obviously, players weren't starting and, and all that sort of stuff. Is that like is they're, they're basically on, sacrificing a player? What they're doing right now is by doing this shenanigans, which they didn't do in preseason. By the way, a preseason formation that worked really well, uh, me will agree. Um, and now they're sacrificing a winger just to accommodate for Chilwell to play left wing. It's embarrassing. Um, I, don't I don't know, know what I, Potch is doing there. I don't. Let, know, I let don't him cook. Know let him cook. I say. Trust him as a, does he not trust him as a left back? Him, him defending wise. I don't understand what it is. Is it he doesn't trust the wingers? Because Mudrick came on and looked absolutely terrible. Uh, Madawake wasn't efficient. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure. I thought Madawake was okay. He's got something about him compared to the others. He just needs he help. But that left. game, he was ineffective. Mm. And I think we're quite inexperienced. You know, our average age is 22. I found this out. Mm. Our average. And to be honest, though, we haven't been playing bad till this Forest game. Let's be honest. You guys agree? What, what was your game before this game? Well, we beat Luton 3 0, but that doesn't really. That's a third. Uh, should have been five. And then you played Liverpool when you were better than them. Liverpool 1 1, and the West Ham game, it would have been different if Enzo had scored. I think, in terms of possession, I think I've got a few stats actually. Let me get this up now. I'm a stat merchant Amir now. I did have a look at this because I didn't want to bring to, it up. Up to Amir. Yeah. Oh. I'll we've, just, had uh... the bo- we've had the most big chances created and missed in the last four games. Um, most possession in the league, which doesn't mean jack shit, really. Anything Second really. most passes completed, which also doesn't mean jack shit. But the, we are creating. And what you've done game, is you've I don't just know. loaned your... Is it a loan? Your striker out to Syria is what you've done there. You've loaned another striker out loan to who? Syria. Lukaku. Who? Lukaku. Not saying he's your answer, yeah, but, but he's another option. Be... Do you know what? When you guys asked me last, last week, what would be your dream... Transfer. I did say an experienced striker, and yeah. that's what I think we're lacking a bit of experience because we obviously got Cole Palmer, who looks good when he came on, but it's the striker aspect. We we do lack experience. The the, the, the average age of twenty two is is nuts. Like Conor Gallagher is one of the more serious senior players, and he's twenty three. Well, I, I, mean, I said this. I said this, was it was it last summer? Bonus? Was it last summer? Bonus took over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year, I said year. I said this last summer and in in January as well. Chelsea didn't buy wrong or buy the bad players. They just didn't buy the players that they needed. Like you bought in Felix on loan, who as we said many a time during that sort of last season, not an out and out striker. He's not a goal scorer. He's a good player, but you can't dispute the yeah. fact he's. And it happens. And like you've gone through the summer now, you spent a billion pounds in what's it three windows, and Thank you've. You you brought in Kunku in. Obviously, I know he's injured, but he's still not an out-and-out striker. Yeah, but that's another thing. I mean, like, as well, we said, said in stuff, pre-season, but... everyone was saying Chelsea looks scary, right? Um, we do have Kunku missing. I mean, Charney Chukameka, he got injured at the West Ham game. There is a couple of injuries, but this this Chilwell business at left wing, I don't know. And I don't just want to come at Chilwell because it's not just all him, but I guess we've lost Reese James as well at right back, but Malo Gusto has been, I think, a decent replacement like a decent backup but I, I don't know it's the slow block stuff we can't beat a low uh, block team I was going to ask you Amir, uh, where would you rank Pochettino in the league in terms of managers 
based on the last four games or based on ov- overall? Just based on managers in the Premier League. We're going on best off all the everything accolades, not just the last four games. I think he's top five. But fifth. Oh. Fifth or four. What do you Who mean are that? the four managers that are better than Pochettino? Pep, um, Klopp, um, Steve Cooper. Arteta in there, aren't we? Um, if we're going overall, I think he makes top five. Fifth. I put him fifth. Where's like Emery, Eddie Howe? Emery, 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 who else? Eddie Howe, Eddie Robert Dezabi, Eric Ten Hag. Now, everyone's forgetting what Poch did at Spurs, though. I could be deluded by this, saying this, but overall, I think Poch, the start of the season, would have been fifth. I would probably put Emery fourth, actually. I wouldn't put... What about Robert Dezabi, Eric Ten Hag? Eric Ten Hag, not over Poch, in my opinion. And... Sh- Too early. Fair enough. We, um... You know what? What do you guys think, then? Because you could... Very well, I probably will be spun of being delusional, but I'm going overall. Like, I'm thinking about what he did at Spurs as well. Because, yeah, no, yeah, what, I can see what you're saying. What he did, as football fans have said it, what he did at Spurs on that budget, the fact that Sizoko decided to give away a super penalty in the Champions League final to ruin the game. If, if he yeah, didn't do that, that, that's with every manager, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where it's yeah, good for Ten Hag, you say the hair cost us the Europa League. No, I know, but there's ifs and but no, but yeah, but you still had games to win, they still yeah, would have been more. in that game, it would have been the final. Yeah, they were in. Well, the where would you where would you but put let's... Poch then? I want, I'm interested. Just just one like, would you put him top ten? I put him fifth, but I don't think he's near the top. I think he's fifth. Yeah, I think he's number five. But where would you guys then put? I'm not mad at it, but I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think Ten Hag's ahead of him. I think what Robert Dezabi's done is better than anything Poch has done compared to considering yeah, what, he, what he walked into. What he did at yes. Spurs. What he's doing with Brian is what... beyond Spurs. What... I think. I think Tottenham should have won something for what Posh did and they unfortunately didn't, despite having the best striker in the world for a very long period of time and having Human Son, who was the most clinical player at the time in the world. So they should have won something. Other positions, though, did he? Yeah. For me, what Robert Dezabi is doing, and I think if Dezabi, if he wins a trophy, there won't even be an argument, but what he's done so far and how he's implemented and how quickly he's done it, I think Dezabi beats Posh as a manager. Um, obviously, Posh went to PSG and I'm assuming he won trophies there. But I think the, I think Dzerbi could go there and do that as well, and I think I could go there and do that personally <laughs> win the league on. But um, yeah, aside from that, Eriksen Hag is definitely better than Poch. There's That's I don't even think there's a question about it. That what he did with that Ajax team versus but the only difference. I mean, the only Poch. difference was Poch. that Poch Poch went one round ahead of him with a team like. So wouldn't that make Poch a better manager because they went face to face and Poch outdid him? Poch had a better team. That doesn't matter. Do you think? Because they, they had a 2 0 lead. Poch had more backing. backing. I know we compare Poch to the Premier League managers. At the time, Eric Ten Hag was at Ajax. He didn't get as much backing. I think Ajax had a better team, arguably. You could say in hindsight, but in terms of how much was invested into those teams. Delict, Onan, I'm I'm assuming Onana was there. Frankie de Jong, Tadic, Ziyech, Van der Beek, these, like, Good players, but at the time they were not. No they're not what they are now. Like they're household names now, some of them, but they were not that at the time. And he did it with less investment and less expectation to even do it. I, I don't know if he had less investment though, because I remember up until because of their stadium being built, he only had Lucas Mora for like a year and a half. That's the only transfer. Well, you'd be surprised. Did, did, have, from, no, did, did have Eric, Eric Dyer at centre back, which may I add is a. Minus five points. And, he won a, and to be fair, Ten Hag won a trophy in his first season in England, which Poch, despite spending one billion pounds, yeah. will most likely not do. I could be wrong. No, he might win some. He spent more. He probably spent more in that window than Poch did in his entire Spurs career, no? Probably. He probably has done, to be fair. Know, the top one. You know, that's, a, that's a good question. We should leave that to people. Poch or Ten Hag as an overall manager, right? I think you, even you, Amir, would say Ten Hag. You're just saying it now because he's your manager. No, I don't know though. Because I took Emery. Emery, I, I said instantly. Mm. What about Gary O'Neill? <laughs> He's transformed Wolves. Oh, I wish if Lopetegui was still in this league, I'd put him ahead of Poch as well. Would 100%. you? 100%. What? Yeah, okay. I think we should move on, shouldn't we now? From As you said, we'll, we'll leave the question to everyone else. So, yeah. 
Yeah, Ten Hag or Poch. Uh, Brighton 3, Newcastle 1. Uh, I've seen a lot of memes about Newcastle fans staying behind and celebrating. And Chavez, I'll give you your 30 seconds of fame. Evan Ferguson hat-trick. Time starts now. Evan Ferguson is going to be the best striker in the world. He's already well on track. He did something that wonder kid Marcus Rashford has yet to do. He scored a Premier League hat-trick. Um, I don't know why I'm selecting my own player while I say that. But I say that because Evan Ferguson is definitely... On track, hopefully, if, if Sir Alex Ferguson was our manager, Evan Ferguson would be our player right now. He's a Man United player, built through and through. I want us to bring back the good old days, to be honest. Ferguson, Hoyland up front, two explosive wingers and do what we used to do. But, and time is up. Yeah, he's an, no, 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 no. He's an incredible <laughs> player. You're going to see him again. He's going to play against France. Hopefully he can score against them. But um, I think one thing about him, and it's not actually anything to do with what he does, he's got a God-given uh, physique, which Erling Haaland, like Hoyland, those type of players have. Let's see what he does with it. I think he's with a really good manager. As a Man United fan, I'd love him right now. But if he was to make the correct decision in his career, I really don't think he should move from Brian even next window. At least two more years with this specific manager. Because he's a very good manager who brings the very, best out of players. Question, guys. Um, if he was to leave next summer, how much would he go for, considering what Brian have sold Caicedo, um, Cucurella, mm. other players like this? How much would Evan Ferguson be worth next year? Hundred, if he carries on the way he does and somehow gets like fifteen Premier League goals at his age, eighteen, he's got to be worth like one hundred and thirty something million like that. Wow, that's what he's worth. I don't think I think he'll go. He could potentially go for more, but I don't think anyone can afford him to that level. Is anyone willing to take that punt on him? Who knows? I'm, I'm going to revert you back to your comment. No one's watching Ireland against France. I'm, I'm being honest. No one's watching that. It's the Euros qualification. <laughs> A lot of French people will be watching, tuning in to the best striker on the pitch. I don't care about any Colin Moore. He doesn't know if he's in the squad or in Mbappe's. <laughs> Watch Ferguson. <laughs> Moving swiftly on to Sunday uh, before I come around your house and verbally abuse you. Uh, <laughs> not doing over video. Video's not enough. Needs to be in person after those comments. Uh, Liverpool 3, Villa 0. Uh, didn't get to watch the game because, you know, we're in the UK and it wasn't televised. Um, you know, none of us are criminals around here. We don't have dodgy fire sticks. I watched the game. I put it. <laughs> go, go, Chavez. Um, I, I was in the UK. I was in the UK and I did watch the game, actually. Um, I don't know how I did it. Um, but uh, so, what's his name? Trent. Trent was outstanding. He's got, fine, he? He's got like a 20k. <laughs> Laugh or fun. You, some, at what point, at what point did I channel. say I wasn't at Anfield? I could have been at Anfield. Someone sponsor us. Someone sponsor Chavez, more like. <laughs> yeah, um, what's it called? Uh, Trent was brilliant in that game. Salah did his classic old goal at the back. Was Darwin Nunes, he's... I know, I think there's a reason why we all love this guy. It's because he gets himself into these positions. He's very good at it. He missed his chances this week. I really hope... Uh, well, actually, I don't want Liverpool to do well, but it could be very scary if he actually does carry on from that Newcastle game. He didn't particularly do it in this game. Villa, on the other hand, um, seems to be up and down at the moment. They're kind of like us, play well at home and then get destroyed away. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't worry too much because I thought that was Liverpool playing really well. Uh, but yeah. What um, I haven't, I didn't see the highlights of that game. Um, I sort of got given to Darwin then it was a Matty Cash own goal. But it came off the post, didn't it? And then... Yeah, hit him. Yeah. yeah. The only question I have is um, Salah, if, your Liverpool owners and um, that Saudi team, was it Al? Um, the, the answer is yes. Yeah, Al something. Al fill in the blanks. Al fill in the blank. Yeah. Al, yeah, um, coming for you. 150 million for yep. 30. 31. Are yep. you... Despite no, you can't make Dan, any... there's no one in world football who they can replace uh, Salah with right now. They don't need someone right this second. They've no, got this will, that will cost them so much. <laughs> Yeah, do you think he's irreplaceable at the moment? So, um, so they're gonna have enough. The only player, I was saying, the only player that could actually come in and it wouldn't replace Salah, but it would be somewhat five percent closer would be Usman Dembele. But he's moved, so there's actually no one out I'm there. I'm not saying he would leave Arsenal, but they would have the 150 million plus whatever money they've got kicking about in the little money box somewhere at Anfield. Saka, so you're just doing what Paul Merson said. And it was no, but the I most agree. horrific. Why would okay? Can I, Dan? Actually, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not glad, saying. No, no, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought this up because I really wanted to ask Paul Merson this, but I don't get to speak to the guy. Unfortunately, okay. why would <laughs> Saka right. leave his childhood club to go play in the Europa League while his childhood club, his academy club, are in the Champions League? They could be knocked Money. out by this point. Money. You think Saka would do that? You genuinely think Saka, the same player, the, the same player? Arsenal Saka. fans, Arsenal fans said they'd rather uh, keep Saka than win the no, Champions with, League. Yeah, no, I've seen the video. That was weird. And did you see the way he was loving it? On um, they showed him the video of them. Yeah, yeah you he think he'd leave? Yeah, 
No, Dan, Saka would not leave. I'm not, I'm not, I have no ah. affiliation with Saka, but Saka would not leave. You could offer him the world. You could offer him all the money on this planet. He wouldn't leave Arsenal. You don't think he'd go to Real Madrid or Man City? No, Liverpool. I'm saying Liverpool and Europa League. They team. would they would have Salah money and the Salah transfer money. They'd be able to put And you think Saka would leave a Champions League, a team in the Champions League? Arsenal could be out of the Champions League by this point. It probably will no. be, man. They got the pedigree. They got the minerals for that. They got the minerals. And even no, if Real Madrid came, well, okay, fine. That's a, that's a stretch. But Liverpool, even Champions League, Liverpool, Saka's not leaving. I think Arsenal fans would agree. I'm not an Arsenal fan. I, I think Arsenal fans would tell you better in the comments. Do it. That's another yeah. debate, I suppose, for for another day. Palace Wolves three two. Didn't get to watch the game that was on Sky. Uh, I was on as 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 the England squad um, deserves it. I guess that's the end thing. And yeah. Well, moving on to the final game of the match week: Arsenal three, Man United one. Chavez. Yeah, uh, for me, game of the season so far. Um, I'm actually quite happy that we were in a game in which, because we lose all the time these days, at least we were in a game in which we didn't play shit to lose, completely shit. Um, I thought the first half was a bit embarrassing on our part, but also on Arteta's tactics. He he did the one thing that we really wanted. He just let us have the ball. I, I know Anana is a keeper you don't want to press, but I thought they gave a bit too much respect to him. But they kind of changed it a bit. Um, but we did grow into it second half. Hoyland came on and finally it looked like we had a player who could hold the ball up and the rest of the team could move up. It was really nice to see. Something to be positive about. And then the rest is just football. Garnacho scored. I lost my head. I couldn't believe it. That would have ended so many things. Our horrific away record. Um, we haven't beaten Arsenal at their stadium for so long. There would have been so many like taboos that would have ended from that. But that's football. And when you have Johnny Evans and Maguire in the team, it was as inevitable as it gets that we would concede. Um, that was question. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Why did he put Johnny Evans in? I know Maguire came on for an injured... Martinez. Yeah, Lindelof looked destroyed. Um, if you, saw, I don't know if Lindelof's injured. I don't think he's... He just couldn't run. Like, he got to the... I think he just... I, put was, too I, much thought, in. It was, I thought it was I thought it was Yeah. But at that point, you have to put the next player in. And he did. He just did. Um, and it didn't work out. It's football. Um, but yeah, uh, aside from that, obviously there's decisions you can complain about, but I'm not going to waste my breath on that because I feel was like the whole pen? world... Was... was there a pen on Rasmus Hoyland? Um, on-field decision, yes, but I've always said if a referee doesn't get it on-field, I'm not one to complain. I don't think VAR could have intervened there. It's not enough to overturn. So fair, like, fair, fair got missed. Um, Havertz but yeah, one Habits one for me, I'm very shocked that they made the right decision. I've had a lot of Arsenal, a couple of Arsenal fans said there was double contact and stuff. For me, it was too soft. There wasn't enough in it. But some people said, and we're all shocked, aren't we, that they could actually overturn that because they don't. Said if Rashford's no. was a pen, then this one should have been a pen because they were quite similar. It's true, <laughs> but again, we we the don't argument. make the decisions. We, we don't make the, decisions. the argument every That's week, good. week in week out, not just from us, from every other footballing mm. podcast, every other footballing fan and pundit and whoever else is the consistency. And yet again, but yeah, ignore that. Yeah, so I was going to quickly say one thing about Arsenal. I don't think Arsenal are actually that good. Um, that game, and then so far this season, they haven't had the. St- I don't know. They're not the same team for me yet. Maybe it's because Havertz is playing. Personally, I've watched a few games this weekend. Tell me who was a worse footballer that played in the Premier League this weekend than Havertz? He is absolutely, and I'm ben telling you, Chihuahua? abysmal, abysmal. It's a, well, I, I don't watch Chihuahua play, but he was so bad. And for that much money, he really needs to be dropped now. Like, Jorginho can play, play Rice up a bit ahead. They need to do whatever they can. They can't stop this guy anymore. Question for you, Chavez, very quickly. Um, Eric Ten Hard's player management. Um, he's obviously come out and said Jaden Sancho wasn't good enough in training. Led to Jaden Sancho releasing a statement as well. Do you think he handled that well? Or do you think he was wrong in what he did and the way he approached that situation? Ten Hag is very straightforward with how he deals with things. Did it with Rashford, said that he missed training, told us the truth. That's I'm sure that's the angle he was coming at to tell us full transparency, which is what we ask for as football fans. The moment it happens, suddenly everyone is uh, on Ten Hag's case. Uh, Sancho is a player who got a three-month mental health break. Tell me any other player in world football gets to do that with his wages, and I will stop this argument right now. 